next comedian coming to the stage performs all over town. I want you guys to put your hands together for Mr. Luchin Formichella. <laughs> Hello, I'm homeschooled. <laughs> it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> I am um, homeschooled. I love homeschooling. Uh, but if I had to pick a least favorite part, it would have to be sex ed. <laughs> that was a pleasure. <laughs> I, um, I have it on good authority that in school, when they do sex ed, there is a video. And I can tell you that in homeschooling, there is no video. There's just my mom. And lots and lots of eye contact. I, um, homeschooling in my house was a threat more than anything else. I was a very wily child, and I never actually did it. Uh, I never got pinned down. But what I would happen is I would run to my mom and I'd go, Mom, I'm not doing math today. And she'd go, fine, that's fine. You don't have to do math. Hand me that banana. We're going to put on a condom. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would run to my math book. And so if you ever meet a homeschooler who's done with calculus by eighth grade, you're going to know the reason. <laughs> it's a very uh, motivational tool, the threat of sex ed from a parent. Like, if you're having trouble getting your kid to do something, there's a two-step process to get them to do it. The first step is to pull them out of school and start homeschooling them. And the second is when they won't do something, go, fine, hand me that banana. <laughs> it will work every time. I, um, I got close one time to being sex edited. Uh, it was by my dad. He came in and had a conversation about the birds and the bees with me. Uh, but the thing is that was good for me is that he is equally shy about that kind of thing and so the conversation ended up being about birds and bees. <laughs> <laughs> like you went, Lucian, what's your favorite bird? And I went, I don't know, Dad, I guess the Oriole, it sounds like Oreo. <laughs> and then he went, great talk, son, great talk. <laughs> I, um, this, this lack of a sexual education has put me behind the eight ball in a lot of things that I really should know. Like, for instance, I used to think that a French kiss was that peck on the cheek goodbye that adults would give to each other after dinner parties. Uh, my friend helped me sort that out when I told him how wrinkly it was when I French kissed my grandmother. <laughs> it was an awkward experience. It's even more awkward. I used to think that menstruation was another word for masturbation. Which in my defense, it has men in the title, so throw me a little bit of a bone. Found out at a checkup at 14 years old when my doctor asked me if I had any questions about my body. And I asked him how regularly it was okay for a kid my age to be menstruating. <laughs> Here's, here's the kicker. Up until about four months ago, I'm 18. Up until four months ago, I thought that the average size of a man's penis was supposed to be nine inches. Nine inches! Kind of stunted my confidence a little bit. But I found out in the most amazing way that that was not true. And, and I walked into the natural history, the, 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 the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I went into the Greek and Roman section, statue section, and I looked at the statue of a Greek demigod, and I looked at his penis, and then I looked at mine, kind of in my mind. <laughs> and out loud I went, oh my god, they're the same! <laughs> and so now I can lay claim to the fact that I am the only man in the history of the universe to walk into the Metropolitan Museum, see the chiseled features of the Greek statue demigod Theseus, and then leave the higher self-esteem that I walked in with. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a weird guy, in case you haven't been able to tell. I'm a weird dude. Um, I hate family reunions, which in itself is not that weird, uh, but the reason why is, uh, and that reason is I'm always afraid of falling in love with a cousin. I don't know if anybody suffers from that. It's 
it's a really uh, just a dark fear. You know, I'll, I'll be in the car on the way up and get it all getting all tightly wound. <laughs> Have to give myself a little talking to him, like, don't pull any of the illusion, keep it in your pants. It's annoying because you know you can't hide what's inside. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, feelings of love and hate cannot be denied. Uh, and it's especially awkward, too, because my family's very Italian, you know, kind of hands-on. <laughs> Walk into the door, it's like, oh, Lucian has a gone, and the cugs and the kisses, and it's like a freaking orgy in there, man. <laughs> I'm like, back up, Cousin Martha, I might pop a boner! <laughs> it's a scary thing, that fear. I, uh, I've never fallen in love with a cousin. I have slipped once, though, did something I shouldn't have. Turned to my cousin at Christmas and I said, Hey, Jimmy, in a completely objective way, Aunt Gina looks pretty damn hot tonight. And in my defense, she married into the family. But I still shouldn't have told her son. <laughs> yeah. That's my worst fear. Uh, my second worst fear is kind of equally lame. I'm afraid that one day, at some point in my life, I might have to walk into a Victoria's Secret, which is just a scary thought because I don't like anything to do with women's undergarments. I, um, I have it all worked out in my night terrors. Uh, <laughs> a lady that I am trying to woo sends me in uh, as a part of some sort of mission to prove myself, and I walk up to the counter and I go, Excuse me, madam, I'd like to purchase a brassiere. And, and no, it's not for me. <laughs> that laugh is to diffuse any tension in the room. <laughs> and she goes, Okay, that's fine. What size do you want? <laughs> what? There are multiple sizes? Which is the stupidest thing I've ever seen, because if I walk into lids, I have the whole store before me. So I do what anyone would do in that kind of situation, is I buy all of the sizes. <laughs> Walk out. Um, I mentioned before I'm 18. Uh, I'm 18, I've never done drugs, which is kind of a weird thing, because, you know, I'm 18. Um, everyone's doing it. But nobody believes me. It's, uh, it's a strange thing. Like, my doctor didn't believe me. You know, I, I walked into the checkup, uh, where apparently a lot of interesting things in my life happened. Uh, and he goes, okay, son, let me ask you this, you don't have to be ashamed. Do you smoke, drink, do drugs, have sex, or anything like that? I said, no. He asked my mom to leave the room. And then he said, I'm going to ask you again. Do you smoke, drink, have sex, do drugs, or anything like that? And I went, no. And then he leaned in real close. And he said, I'm going to ask you one more time. <laughs> and I want you to be truthful. <laughs> You smoke, drink, have sex, do drugs, or anything like that. And I said, no! And so he reached behind him and took out a packet labeled Battling an Addiction. <laughs> Handed it to me and said, here, you look like a heroin man to me. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thanks a lot.